Yeah, you boys do hear. And what you see here on the screen is console one. Why? Because I'm doing this video to answer a request from you guys. Understand here how to control your third party plugins with console one. Yep, you can and yep, this bring the whole console one experience to another level. I'm telling you guys. So to do so, it's going to be very simple. We're going to do it step by step and uh, you're going to have fun after that. So here we go. What you see here is the main console one window. OK, this is a window which is available only if the console one software is running. And this is the software that is locking console one to Softube stuff and also UAD. So what you're going to do first is to be sure to put console one in MIDI mode. To do so, you're going to quiet this software here. So I'm just gonna go here, right click and say quite console one, okay? Now, the, the software is no more uh, controlling console one, but you will have to unplug, which I'm doing right now, unplug and replug console one. And you're gonna see that it's in MIDI mode when you're gonna see all the LEDs for each knob uh, uh, lighting, okay? This gives you the information that it's in MIDI mode right now versus a regular mode. Okay, so now that this is done, <clears throat> you're gonna be, you're gonna have to create here a control surface. Okay, I already uh, created one here. So we're gonna create one together. So new control surface here, you call it console one. So I'm going to call it C1 new. Okay. I'm going to say, okay, you're going to receive MIDI from console one and send MIDI information to console one. Okay. It's created here, which means that now if I open a plugin here, when you see console one, this is my old uh, mapping. Okay. You're going to see here a list of all the controller I can have and I created. And you're going to see console one new here. Okay. But if I move a knob, nothing happens. Even if I'm in learn mode here, you click here to get in learn mode because uh, I didn't map the, the, the actual physical uh, knobs to, uh, to studio one. You have to tell studio one which knob are and uh, you can even label them and all that. We're going to see how. Okay. So the good thing is that in console one and even other those also, you, you have some, uh, some focus mode here. The focus mode basically is that when you have a control surface that is controlled by several plugins, the plugins you're going to select here, the control surface is going to focus on the selected plugin. See that how it switched? Okay, this is exactly what how we want it to work. Okay, so we're gonna map console one. To do so, you just have to double click here. I think if I recall well, oh, we just click on console one, C one here. Come on, homie. I have some problems with the the list because of the the recorder. Let me do that. Okay, I double click here. It's working. Okay. So just double click on the name. Usually I double click here, but I don't have any parameter. So now we, we're going to make a MIDI learn. Okay, let me just do this, this, and this. We're going to make a MIDI learn here. Okay. So you click on MIDI learn, and I'm going to move each knobs. And I'm gonna press also my uh, my uh, buttons on console one. It's taking everything, okay? So I'm moving here the input gain, low cut, high cut, filter to compressor, bypass, shape, gate, gate release, sustain, punch, hard gate, equalizer on. So tap off shelf 
frequency low gain, Q frequency low mid gain, Q frequency high mid gain, type of shelf, frequency high gain, compressor switch, attack ratio, release, mix, threshold, drive, character, pen, solo, mute, volume. Okay, I can even uh, use the, for example, here I'm gonna use the page plus, page minus, just to show you some. Okay, the good thing is that, look at that, you, st you, got, you have to be still on the MIDI learner here. And then you can label them, yes you can. So here I'm gonna put input, right? I'm gonna put here, I think it was the high cut, let me just move it. That was the low cut. Okay. Here we go, high cut and all that. I ain't gonna do the, them all. Okay, what we're gonna do, for example, is uh, the compression, uh, the compression. Okay. So here I have my uh, button compression here. So I'm gonna click comp on switch and look at that you right click on it and you see this is a button here comp on right this is very important okay you will have to for each for each parameter to to use this transmit the value why to avoid jump of values okay so here this is the compressor side here so yeah, i have my attack here let me just do it like that we're gonna do it with compressors. Just to show you, this is a ratio. Okay. This is a release. The mix knob. And here, the threshold. Okay, I really, I will need, um, my output gain here. Output gain here, for example, for the 1176s and all that. I'm gonna use that. I want to map the drive here also because some comps have have it. This is my character. So those names uh, are the name displayed on my console one. Okay, if you have one, you know it. And uh, you can give it a other name, but I suggest you put those names because this is what you're going to see on your controller. Okay. So here we go. We have it here. Let me just like, you see here, this is the track. Plus, because I'm going to show you something else. Track minus. Okay, let me uh, use the save preset here. Okay, I think we straight like that. I have the okay here and the mute here, which are also switches. The save here are switches also. Same for the track minus here. Okay, so for all those guys, we're going to say, hey, transmit the value, okay? If I don't do that, if when I'm going to switch from a plugin to another one, if the value is not the same, you're going to have the regular stuff you have with other controllers, aka jumps. This is like a really annoying. So you just take your time, do it like that. So for example, if the switch is going to be on, it's going to be displayed on, on my console one. It's going to take this in information. Okay. So we're going to map a compressor right now, or maybe the compressor. Let me just like open a channel strip here. Okay. And I'm going to say, okay, to engage a dynamic here, I'm going to use the on off switch of C1 here. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click my on off switch here comp on you remember we call it like that and you just gonna touch this parameter okay so you see that 
this is the controller I have on my controller and this is the plugin parameter you just have to click this okay in some cases you 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 can just also if you prefer to do it like that uh you can also you just double click here it's really slow with a you can also uh, for example uh if i touch another parameter attack here you can also choose to drag and drop here uh, let me just like uh, see the attack here yeah there's no attack this is the fast attack here. so let let me just like do it with the ratio here the ratio i can go there and just drop it on the ratio here okay and now i'm moving the ratio on my controller and it's controlling I can engage the dynamic knot. Okay, so you can drag and drop like that. I'll just do it like that. I like to do it like that. So the threshold here, I'm gonna touch the threshold, touch the threshold on my controller and just link it. And it's done. Same for the release, my friends. Let's do it. So the release, okay. We have here peak, I don't need it. Maybe the fast attack and all that, but I don't need it for, that, for now, okay? And I'm gonna use maybe the input and the output. It can be uh, also great. So I'm gonna touch here my input, here, output, okay. I have here, the control five is the bypass on my controller. So I'm going to use it to bypass the whole things. Okay. So now I can bypass the plugins or not. Okay. And so here we go. So I'm moving right now the knobs here. So ratio, threshold, let me just play, put the playback. Okay. So now, for example, uh, I'm going to open here the purple here. And I'm gonna try to control it here. So the output here, let me just say, okay, output is gonna be controlled by output here. I, got, I have it. Let's see the attack here. I'm moving the attack knob. Release, uh, release knob here. Okay, so I have it here. Okay, so for example, look at it. I'm on a fast attack fast release if I open the China strip if I touch the release I have it on my controller at the same position so I'm moving it right now and it's taking the the value right so I'm gonna be on mid here okay I go back here on on here and on my controller I see that my attack and my release are fast and I can move them from their relative position this is the good thing here okay so there you have it, my friends. You can control your third party plugins with no problems. I'm gonna show you something else really great. Okay. The other thing here that you can do is that not only you can control your plugins, but if I can click here, track plus here. Okay. Go here, I right click here. And I say sign, sign it. And I have all the things here. So, for example, here, the track plus, the track plus, uh, I'm gonna do it like uh, insert a new track. Okay, like that. So now if I click on track plus, I will have this menu. This is exactly what I want. And for my save here, for example, so you right click, sign command. Uh, I'm gonna do a save as here. So now if I click on it on my hardware, I have a save as here. Okay, so not only you can use like the, the, the button you're gonna use 
on a regular basis uh, for the con to control the plugins okay and we're gonna do a, another one together here but you can also control your, your dough basically okay for example the display on here yeah, button I don't have it yeah it's here display what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use it look at that so transmit the value here display I'm gonna use it to um, let me just assign display the plugins or not okay so for example right now I'm clicking on display and look at it Okay, I can do that. I already have a, so a shortcut on my <clears throat> keyboard, so it's not. A... Okay, so question: If I go back to console one, I can do that. Yeah, if I, for example, I decide to uh, insert console one right now, I'm gonna be fucked up. Or not? Look at that. First thing is that you can use it like a regular plugins. So you can do your mapping here from there. Okay? Same thing. But it's simple as that. You just unplug here. Console 1. Okay? You launch. You go here. You launch the Console 1 software. Okay? And you replug console one and he will communicate with the hardware okay it's done so now I have my console one here so I can select the tracks enable the things and start moving my stuff back okay great yep and then do the whole things again if I need to so it's just a question of uh, organization in your session. Usually uh, I do the early mixing stage with console one and then my best stuff with a uh, third party plugins. So this is where I unplug, uh, I, uh, I use the console one as a regular controller when I need the drives from other, other stuff and all that. So there you have it, my friends. There's another option. I ain't gonna do this because you're gonna mess it up. I'm pretty sure because I, do, I done it also. Maybe you, you're less dumb than me, but you can also control uh, here your channel parameter here with console one. Okay, so you can here say console one, you're gonna control my volume, panoramic, and all that. But the problem is that you're gonna have to have this window always opened to be able to switch between plugins control and channel control. Okay. So at the end, it's going to be like a choice. Do you want to control like your mixer here or do you want to control the plugins and all that? So uh, this can be done. It can be another video, but for now, you have it, my friends. You can control your third party plugins. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, feel free to ask uh, if you didn't understood uh, something. And on the next video, I will try to take the time to show you how to do it in Cubase basically, which I managed to do. Uh, so don't forget uh, about the, the ability to control your dough. It's really great. Don't forget that you have 20 uh, switch <laughs> from one to 20 on console one. You have several stuff and all that. So this is really, really the best controller for your plugins you can get on the market right now. Even if you don't want to use like the, the soft tube stuff, I really uh, uh, encourage you guys to just keep it for the hardware alone because uh, basically I'm able to control every plugin I have basically every plugin that have compression AQ uh, gate expander I can I can all my color plugins like drive and all that I can also uh, so just for the reverb and all that but uh, even that if you just want some regular controls like the dry wet and some AQ on the reverb the, the filters and all that you can do that Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care of you guys and uh, feel free to ask me some questions if you need. Take care. Bye-bye.